Okay, Jan here. We are live Monday afternoon, busy Monday here, but uh, we're getting out to you here. We go live on Facebook and uh, you are listening on the podcast. Thank you so much for all your love, uh, care and support for the uh, journey here uh, in, um, in the uh, internet marketing land. So Jan here once again, and uh, can you believe it? We're at uh, episode 77 here. We're just uh, cranking out awesome content and uh, Really appreciate the feedback, as I said. And hey, if this is your first time coming in here, then um, uh, please share, like, comment, uh, send over questions. Uh, love it here. Uh, glad to uh, to help you. Uh, really, that's what it's all about here at the end of the day. And um, hey, if you're looking live here, you're going to be seeing a screen uh, that's asking this question. What's the number one reason Facebook ads don't work for most people? And I had a previous broadcast on this, but I wanted to refresh this. Uh, today because this came up from a question I'd posed out there and um, this is about the um, the episode here is about why your ads and advertising campaigns are destined to fail and it's so negative I mean Jesus uh, come on do we need that on a Monday uh, yes probably you do actually because many of you all and especially in, in new newbies here or folks who are trying to get into social media advertising have this, uh, you know, sort of somewhat insane expectation, and it's not your fault, obviously. Uh, this just comes from, you know, uh, lack of understanding, uh, lack of learning, uh, for, you know, first time going into this space. Uh, it's something that uh, hopefully you are talking to somebody who's an expert at this and can educate you and really do a lot more upfront conversations before just cranking out ads, right? So we're not going to get into that. In fact, if you want to go back, I forget the episode right now, but I talk about Facebook audits. In fact, if you type Facebook audits uh, into Google and on YouTube, you'll find it very quickly. And of course, go through the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, etc. Uh, but hey, let's dig into it here. So why is this that you know most ads don't work out the gate? Well, and by the way, I'm talking about all direct response, you know, lead gen e-commerce, <laughs> any sales sort of driven conversations that you want to have online. And so what, what started it all here, and I want to uh, shout out to my friends here in the community of uh, Facebook and advertising and direct response because uh, I'm going to call them out here today for some great responses. Uh, uh, what I did is I said, okay, well, you know, we definitely are talking about a number of moving parts here. And the ones that start out the conversation always is, hey, what does your creative look like, right? So I called out the creative side, right? images, videos, et cetera, number A here. Number B, the copy, the messaging and congruence to lander, you know, meaning, you know, all that messaging and the positioning statements, how well is that situated throughout the funnel and how well does that convert, right? So understanding that process, the, the, the really more uh, more along the lines of the customer journey here, but, but, but the copy and the message is central to this, obviously. Uh, the targeting. Very key as well, right? You don't want to just spew the message out to the world. The spray and pray marketing is what we call that, right? Uh, you want to test for all of these things, but you want to have a good understanding going in from analysis, research, uh, market, competitive research, all of that good stuff. So that's number C. And D, um, incorrect campaign type. And clearly, one of these alone is not necessarily going to be your culprit. But if you start stacking these up, you're going to have a, a massive problem on your hands, right? Uh, I mean, you could have creatives pretty well set up. Uh, the copy seems to be in line. You already have proven it. Uh, the targeting, you have a clear understanding, but you're running an incorrect campaign type, right? So if you're trying to get leads and you're running traffic, uh, traffic campaign, uh, you know, uh, that's not going to work for you. Or if you're running a video views campaign, that's not going to work for you. And again, I'm not going to go into that here because we've covered that on other broadcasts. So feel free to go back on that. But suffice it to say, this started a great conversation. And let's see what other peers in the industry said. So and she said, hey, I feel option A and B are hold equal value. A good ad copy without a related scroll stopping creative won't perform as well. And a good creative with an incongruent ad copy would result in lower, conver lower conversions. Love it. Love it lower <laughs> conversions. Uh, lo don't love that. But uh, anyway, you get my drift uh, or anxious drift here. Definitely A and B resonate. David Frame, a man. Number E, he added to this list. How about that? Not having a high converting funnel. Nailed it, right? Because if you have all of these things in check and not a high converting funnel, well, it's not going to happen, right? Eric, Michael Collins, failing to use the right combination of settings within Facebook. Uh, totally couldn't agree more, right? 
Anna Larson starting out ad spend at 100 a day and promptly shutting it off 15 hours later after 45 views, 21 clicks, and zero sales on a funnel that has no pixel. Talk about massive failure and lack of understanding. You know, Anna nailed it there. Thank you for that. And Chris, my man, all four, absolutely, they need to be in check. Tim Kilroy, it's the offer. It's the offer, stupid, right? That's what Tim's talking about here. An ad doesn't work if it isn't driving traffic, but it's the offer that makes the sale. So absolutely true. The irresistible offer. I talk a lot about that here on the podcast. Dan Ryan, wrong offer. Kind of in line with that, right? It's the uh, it's the traffic seems fine, the copy, the creative, everything's fine, only to have a, just an absolute blockage hitting the wall with a wrong offer, a poor offer, something that doesn't instigate next steps, right? Uh, and something that's psychologically positively triggering, right? Um, and I talk about copywriting techniques also, and we have some great interviews here with previous experts, so you want to go back and check those out as well. John Lawson, 100% quality of ad copy. I mean, how, how dead on is that, right? Uh, ads get clicks, uh, you know, yes, absolutely, but the pre-frame, the pre-selling, that's it. And that's all about, you know, uh, getting the mindset right for the uh, the audience, right? So you nailed it. Uh, because ultimately now you'll have landers and funnels that convert by by setting that uh, uh, pre-framing uh, up beforehand, right? And uh, Jack here says, uh, Jack prays a combination of A and B for sure, right? So the creative, the B, the copy, the messaging. Sharon Hayes, uh, kind of a little bit contentious here. I love it. And none of the above listed or mentioned. Wow, Sharon, uh, you're getting right to it. It's not understanding how to correctly position an offer for Facebook audience so that it'd be a proper direct response campaign. Simply put, failure of strategy. So this, uh, uh, Sharon here, clearly has a lot of um, uh, business experience. I've seen it also out in the marketplace. Uh, Sharon, absolutely right. You know, the uh, idea that you don't have a strategy in place, it's it's out the gate failure. Don't You don't have to spend any money or click any buttons to try and be cute with setups and configurations on Facebook. Uh, it's not going to work. Uh, so she continues here. When people see an ad on Facebook, they are not actively looking at that time for whatever an advertising is selling. Is selling. That means a different approach needs to be taken, in most cases, from other kinds of online paid advertising. When you get the strategy dialed in right, the rest of it falls into place. Nice. William Williams, my man, offer. I mean, right to the point. Definitely a big deal, the offer. I mean, how often do we see this at the agency uh, that uh, the, the front end metrics uh, seem fine, the top line metrics, and I'm talking about CTRs and CPMs and, you know, kind of the uh, the immediate go-to uh, numbers, right? Uh, only to see that, that they have just an offer that is, you know, let me just call it out, ridiculous, like not even working for a second. And I think the worst thing is that we see is, when we call it out, they realize, yeah, you know what? That's probably true. Yeah, in fact, totally see it now, right? So not understanding the importance of that. And now we are getting into the most profound answer from our uh, master trainer, John Belcher, over at Ad Skills. Uh, an ad is just uh, uh, one part of an entire sales message. So if you look at the 12-step foolproof sales letter, David Frey, you can see the information required to get somebody to want to buy something. And that, uh, that foolproof sales letter, I will link to that. That's fantastic. He continues, all of the information has to be consumed and in that order. So the question is, how much work are you asking your ads to do? Uh, if it's an ad with an image and a basic headline, the goal is to sell the click, right? So you look for high CTR and then the rest of your funnel is responsible for selling. This gets to kind of the discussion we've been having here that this is not just a one-sided view. Uh, if it's a long ad, either with copy or videos, we talk about long form here, you ask it to do a lot more of the heavy lifting and drive people to the sales opt-in page. Then your ad is graded on CPL and CPA or, or CPA, depending on your model, cost per lead or cost per acquisition, right? So the answer uh, is what John's posing here uh, to your question is another question. What are you asking your ads to do? I'm going to repeat that. Uh, that is really critical right here. What are you asking your ad to do or your ads to do? Alex Vasquez, my man, failure of ads is not talking directly to the avatar, right? So congruence to that uh, avatar, to that target. 
doing a deep dive into the market to know how to talk to them. So true. We spend a lot of time here going through and dissecting the market and finding all the angles and the different decision points we need to make in terms of messaging and positioning. Keep repeating that. Uh, very, very true. Uh, Joe Rossa, the product, the price, the site customer experience, the offer, the brand message. Most reasons have nothing to do with the ad. The ad delivers, hopefully qualified in parentheses, traffic. That is all. Uh, Joe, absolutely. This is just confirming what we now seem to be, um, that we now agree with, that uh, most seem to not understand when they come into this in the first play. Um, uh, my good friend Amanda here, they expect the ads to do the work of their entire sales process instead of viewing them as they should, the method for getting the next action in sequence. In this case, the click. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Amanda is a superstar in this market and understands the importance of the, the strategy and how this is built out. So if you can, you know, I'm scrolling back up here. If you take a look at this, you know, I call that a couple of things here, right? I mean, these are important, but as you start to hear all our pros here, in the community start to talk about it, you're starting to get a sense that, you know, building out ads is way more complex than just, you know, a cute video and some, you know, a copy with some uh, quick headlines and that's it. It's, uh, it's why you need to hire and look at some of these experts here uh, to discuss how they can elevate your brand and position in the marketplace. And really what I'm saying from all of this here is A, you need to build out and improve your sales process and I'm calling this funnels because we're talking online, you need to do that first. Um, and B, use targeted ads and conversion campaigns to drive clicks, which you know, you're know you gonna get a much better results from. And C, check your metrics, optimize and watch conversions soar. Now, all of this is done through diligent testing, you know, and we talked about the research analysis, all of that. And also, and I didn't hear this uh, or see this through these uh, conversations, uh, but it's a mindset that does not expect success overnight, right? So even if you've done all these things, go in with it as in, hey, most of the time, maybe 80% of the time, it ain't going to work, even with all this in place. Now, when I'm saying it going to work, ain't going to work, I'm doing air quotes over here <laughs> because everything is relative. Um, for me and for us, uh, if we have anything working straight out the gate, it's a bit of an aberration. But straight out of the gate is I'm not talking about, you know, overnight, but maybe, you know, in the first three to seven days, you know, we're not expecting a raging, you know, success. But what we are seeing is results from good testing and good uh, methodologies that are put in place to actually really take it to the next le level. Right. And this is ongoing. This never stops. And um, I think that, uh, you know, the hardest thing, especially for newbies and also for uh, new folks coming into this and hiring experts is, you know, how long can I wait to see results and how much do I have to spend? And that's always going to be a relative one. Uh, it's an it depends. But if you can sort of get behind this and understand uh, what uh, my good friends and experts in this field has just said and kind of my summary here is that it's not overnight. You know, the successes that you hear about, the ones that you see screenshots of, and some of our doctor, some of them are doctor out, doctored up and others may be real. It didn't happen overnight. And folks have spent, you know, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of their own money. And again, depending on where you're at, testing this stuff, because just reading a blog post or signing up for a course or doing the Facebook blueprint uh, or even calling your Facebook reps, that's not where the magic lies in turning these things around for you. So I just wanted to get this out here and it sounds a bit negative, this uh, you know destined to fail concept, but I wanted to kind of set your mind straight and um, I'd like uh, uh, my fellow friends here and others to join in in this discussion because uh, here's my next question. Is there anything that we missed that you think we should bring up? Well, these are the things that we see again and again and I appreciate you all coming in here and to all my friends uh, responding to this. And if you like any of all of this, uh, feel free to go out to uh, janrogdrud.com. Uh, that's my personal website there. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to set, set up an appointment there and we can take you through some of this stuff. Um, kind of determine, you know, where are you at in the current status of, of events uh, going forward for your business? And where do you see the biggest holes? Uh, what are some of the things that we can do uh, to kind of uncover those for you before you get started with any massive uh, type of work uh, where you're going to feel lost and uh, 
you know, both both in mind and in money, right? We don't want that. So anyway, this is uh, Jan Rogerud here. Uh, pleasure to be talking at you here today, but feel free to add comments and follow out on YouTube, Facebook Live, and also on the podcast, Media and Marketing. All right, well, have a great Monday. Take it easy, guys and gals. Later.